Whoops. Hey guys, so it's been a while since I uh, did a lesson in this group specifically, but I am uh, usually doing lessons in Dead and Co. group now, and I have the dedicated jams page started, but I wanted to come back here because it's where I did my initial lessons. If you look up my name in the group, you can uh, find everything I've done in here, or go to YouTube where I've uploaded them. So, I wanted to talk about uh, Friend of the Devil, which is uh, how you can kind of do uh, like a solo version by yourself. So that's like the verse progression, you know? I don't know, no, you know, I was trailed by 20 hounds. Didn't get to sleep last night, the morning came around. Said I'll run, but I take my time. Okay, so let's talk about that first part really quick. So, and this is going to be mainly a uh, theory slash chords to the song lesson. Okay, so. All the verses are just based out of the one and four chords in G major or G Ionian if you want to start getting into modes. So hopefully you know. This is supposed to be a beginner lesson because I did Mississippi half step last and transcribed a Jerry solo from 11577, which you can get. Hopefully there's a clickable link after I uh, publish this. But so we have a G chord and a C chord. And if you kind of want to do it by yourself, there's a descending bass thing that goes throughout it. So these are for the verses. Okay, so imagine that. So like one, two, three, four, one, two, three. So a measure of G major and then a measure of C. So if we were to simplify what I just did, G. But we're gonna play G like this instead, so we can kind of do like a solo version by ourselves. So, if you have your G major chord, we're gonna look at the top three strings, and we're gonna put our uh, index finger on the third fret of the high E string. Now, what happens is we put our ring finger on the fifth fret of the the D string, and we kind of do this walk down thing. So we have five on the D string, open, open. Three on the E string, then we walk down. That's the first measure. So, so remember, this this whole first measure is just from D to the E string. And the strumming pattern I like to do is kind of like bass notes, two strums, down up, bass note, down up, bass. The resource I posted for this so far is just all kind of theory, but I think I'm going to transcribe the uh, studio version by ear and some live versions. But this is just how to kind of like uh, interpret it yourself. So this is how I did. So we have a G chord, the first measure. So you do that, 5, 0, 0, which means open, 3. And then you're going to put your, instead of your ring finger on 5, you're going to move it down to 4, which is an F sharp note the major 7th in the key signature, down to 4. Now here's where we have to kind of switch fingering to make it easy. Now we're going to use, uh, what I do actually is put my ring, but let's see. I put my ring finger on the 3 now so I can hit E, which is the second foot of D, and then open. So instead of just strumming G, here we go. And the reason you can't go down from here is because there's, unless you were to tune to drop D, you can't get to that D note. It, I like up here, because you can go down, like the actual song does, instead of... But you can do that too, you could go like... So, uh, that part, this is the verse. So five, open, open three, four, open, open three, 
Then switch your fingers, put your ring finger here, or your middle, I think ring works well. And then put your index finger on the second fret. And then open. So. So G, F sharp, E, D. And then we switch to a C chord. And do the same pattern. C, but now the bass note. What I do is I walk down. So. I take you know, your basic C major chord, then take these fingers off, and just put your middle finger on the second fret of the A string, which is the B note, which is the third in the key of G major. So the second part would be, then repeat. So C, take off both fingers. Just put your middle finger on B, second fret of the A string. Do that pattern. And then zero. But here I like to put that uh, middle finger onto the D, uh, D string. So that kind of gives you an A minor 7, which is... Uh, or I think about it as C with a root of A. So A. So open A string. So I'm just just getting a good angle. Open A string, second fret on the D string. Open G string, first fret on the B string, and open E. And then you keep those fingers down and hit the low G, which is the third fret of the low E string. So slowly. That's a lot more fun than covering it and going like. I lit up from you know I was trailed by. If you're by yourself, you know. I live up you know, I was trailed by 20 pounds. And if that explanation was confusing, I'll post a tab to it. But all you gotta know is the strumming pattern is like pick bass note and do that kind of like bass note, down up. So. Cool. So, we're in the key of G major, and uh, I have sheets, and I was smart this time. I mirrored them when I printed them out, since I have the front-facing camera. So it's mirrored to me, but you should be able to see this. And this is a good beginner guide to uh, everything. So we're on page, we're going to go to page one of this. We'll, uh, yeah, we'll focus on that now, but we'll also focus on the chords the rest of the song, because there's only two other parts. And you can do fun stuff with them. So first part that we just did. So remember, G for a measure, C for a measure, but we're doing walk down on every beat, every quarter note. So descending bass line. I lit out from Reno. I was trailed by twenty hounds. Didn't get to sleep last night, morning came around. Set out D, D major. I mean, this is a beginner lesson, but uh, I'll post a tab. If you don't even know how to play D major, uh, that's not kind of the kind of thing I was going to go over right now, but it's D, set out, running, but I A minor. And then D again. So, set out. Friend of the devil is a friend of mine. I get home before daylight. So D A minor, D A minor. But the second time we go to A minor, we go to C quickly, and then D. And then you know, cool things you can do on the D are like just suspensions, where we take the third out, the major third, and suspend it with the suspended fourth or second. Or on D chords, I like to do this like, like a. Um, you could voice it like this. Got you, got you, this is oh, that's the next part, but uh, said I don't want to take my time. The devil is a I like that voicing for A minor a lot, but for now, you could just go. Said I don't want to take my time. A friend of the devil is a friend of mine. I got home before daylight. Just might get some sleep 
And from there we go to A minor to C. So what I think is A minor to C are two chords away in the key of G major, which we'll talk about. So we can do a walk up from B to C, to the C chord. Uh, where's that part? If I get home before daylight, I just might get some sleep. Be there some sleep tonight. See, you can just do, I, like, instead of playing a D chord, I'm just doing octaves and, you know, kind of following the G major scale. I actually hit a Mixolydian note there, but don't worry about it. So that's that part. D, A minor. If I get home before daylight, I just might get some sleep tonight. And then you can go go back into the walk back into the descending bass sign. So that'd be like open. I can never see the comments on these things. Oh well. Let's see. It's not letting me see the comments anymore. Slight swipe left to reveal comments and reactions. I can't. Oh well. So yeah. Um Let's see. Oh yeah, unfortunately I can't view comments for some reason. Did this to me yesterday, but uh, I'll try to respond to them after. So, um, the very last part is the got two reasons why part. And I can't remember where, but there is a measure of 2-4 in this song, I believe. Uncle John's band does it too, where they like add an... You could think of it as 2-4 or like 6-4 where you add an extra two beats in before the next part. But uh, uh, the very last part is what I consider the bridge. Said I'm running, but I take my time. A friend. And that's just D minor. And uh, uh, actually, no, we just covered that part. It's the got two reasons why I cried. And every time when it goes back to the verse, I like to do that walk up. Hmm. Whoops, I don't know how I did that, but I fixed it. I don't know. Let me just click around here real quick. I'm just going to write a yo in the comments. And okay, maybe just no one's leaving comments. This is cool. Um, so, music theory wise. Oh, well, that part, the bridge. Got two reasons why I cry away each lonely night. I, you can kind of strum a D. And go to a D7. Got two reasons C And I like to take your typical C and add a perfect fifth to the bottom. So we just kind of change our fingers around and add that third fret low string. First one's name she's my heart. People always love to call me during these. And then back to D. Second one is prison, baby. Share it so much. A minor, if he catches, I like to go. You know, you can voice A minor a ton of ways. That's one thing you should get used to is, yeah, there's an open A minor, there's an A minor here, there's a one here. I like this, A minor six. Um, I like this A minor a lot, depending on what you're going for. So, got two reasons why I quite I wait. Lonely night, D, C, first one's name, sweet Emily. D, second one's prison, A, sheriff's on my train. A minor, back up to C, walk up to D.
<laughs> yeah, I'll make a tab for it. But now let's go over the theory to all of this because people are asking me in the Dead and Company group, which I've been broadcasting to. Uh, I had to come back here because this is where I initially did lessons at. Um, man, can't see any of the comments, which really sucks. But uh, okay, so the first sheet that I mirrored oh so cleverly so you could see. And you can download these all for free. Um, we're in the key of G major. So the only songs this chord uses are G, C, D, and A minor. So four chords if I'm thinking correctly. Now let's uh, think of what they are in the key signature. So uh, let me see if I can get down like this. I don't know if you can access it at the same time, but this is what I attached to here. I just kind of made this custom resource. I try to look back at it, but it's mirrored for me, like I said. I also found out that I don't have to do these in portrait mode like I thought, like all the other ones are. It doesn't let you switch once you start. So if you start in landscape like this, it lets you keep going. And, uh... Not... Yeah, it doesn't let you switch during it, but, uh, let's see. I'm so confused why it's not showing me anything on here. Oh, well. Okay, so, um, the first sheet is on page one of the PDF, and like I said, I'll make a tab for what I just talked about after ideas, but... We're doing the G major scale, and in terms of modes, it's the first mode, and it's the Ionian mode. Modes are diatonic, which means dia is like seven, a prefix for seven, so seven note scale, right? So our pentatonic scales that everyone knows are penta five, right? Just like octave in music is eight. So on the first sheet, first thing I wrote is the G major scale, which is G... A, B, C, D, E, F sharp, G. It's our G major scale. And there's a formula for every major scale. Um, and it's whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half. That means half step is a fret away. Whole step is two frets away. So if we were to do it all on one string, whole, whole, half, Whole, 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 half. So this is just a major Ionian. That do mixolydian a lot. And the only difference is it takes that seventh, which is an F sharp, and makes it, um, uh, it flats it, which would give us an F natural. So instead of, we would have, you know, like fire on the mountain. Just changes one note so but we're in G major G Ionian is the mode that means is synonymous with major and there's a chord for every each seven of the notes in the G major scale so our notes are G A B C D E F sharp don't worry about for now if you don't know much theory why there's just an F sharp that goes that's something for another lesson but so, but what I talk about on the first page is making chords. So to make a chord, you start off on all these chords, or we're doing triads, which is three note chords. To build a chord, you just start off on a note, so G, skip the next note, go to B, skip the next note, go to D. So G, B, D, one, three, five, that's our triad. No matter how you voice it. And you know, I've had students that have been like, well, how can you say it's only three notes, but this is a G. This is still a G triad, just because it has octaves in it. G, B, D, G, B, G. So there's only still three different notes, but a seventh chord is when you add, like, an F into it or something, or an F sharp. So, and we can do that and build chords with all, build chords off uh, every note in the scale. So there's also an A minor in the song. If you look at the first sheet, if you do A, skip B, you get C, skip D, you get E, A, C, E, A, C, E, A minor. 
And you can do that with the other chords and the two chords in the song C. C. So C is the fourth degree of the scale, but you want to think of it as one when you're thinking of it as a chord. So C, one, skip D, which would be two, three is E, skip F sharp, and then G. So that's C, and then same thing with D, which is B, uh, D, F sharp, A. So that's what the first sheet is about. And the uh, only difference between a major and a minor chord is the third. So if we're going to take the G major... Remember, it's G, B, D. We have a root, which is the bottom note always, and the, usually a perfect fifth, which never changes. That's kind of why it's called perfect. But the middle note determines if it's major or minor. So, major is higher than minor. We put the major note down, a uh, fret, and it gives us a minor chord. So you can see G major, G minor. These two notes stay the same, the root and the perfect fifth. Cool, so, and then, so there's just two formulas on the sheet that I gave you guys that are really good to remember. Um, how to find the notes in any major scale, and on guitar it's really easy. You can literally just move everything up uh, X amount of frets. So if this is our G major, you can play it like this from the bottom string. Three, five, seven. 3, 5, 7 on the A, then 4, 5 on the D, and then go back down. So all you do to get to uh, like something like A major is you don't have to think a lot. On guitar, you just go up. So that's like a good and a bad thing. On piano, you're forced to think more visually with black and white keys, but... Uh, so there's a formula, the whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half for every major scale. And whole is two frets, half is one fret. And then uh, the chords of any major key signature, starting on the Ionian mode, are major, minor, minor, major, major, minor, diminished. And you can hear that in like Bob Dylan tunes, that even like the Dead cover. I'm pretty sure like a Rolling Stone just goes up this G major scale. G major, A minor, B minor, C, D. It doesn't go up the next two, but so any major key is uh, major, then minor, minor, major, major, minor, diminished. Well, half diminished, I should say, so that would be like a... But that one's not used as often. That's more of a jazz 2-5-1 kind of thing. So, soloing over this, my best advice is to look at the last sheet I printed out. Haha, <laughs> this mirrored thing worked so well. Um, and the first thing I put on there was uh, all the notes in the G major scale. Oh, what I, what I was trying to get at with this sheet, too, is take any major... Uh, scale so G major and the sixth degree so you just count music does have an H so after G we go back to A or yeah G A B C D E that sixth degree E so it's E minor E minor is the same exact scale as G major it just starts and ends on a different note E instead of G so the G major scale is the same exact scale as E minor but I would think of this as if you're soloing over um, G major. Because if you're thinking E minor, you end up landing on E. Which is not bad, but that's the 6. So it doesn't really sound like home bass. It sounds like a G6 if you go back to it. So I made a little loop. And you can use... Instead of just thinking, if you want to start off with just simple pentatonic, use an E minor pentatonic, which is the G major pentatonic. So something like that. But uh, what I would do is get that pentatonic shape down, but don't think so much in shapes and scales. Use the thing I put here, the chart uh, on top, and that shows you every note that's in the scale and, and what its name is. So, that way we can go all around the fretboard and we don't sound like we're just playing a 
scale. So like this. Let me get turn off a little bit. solos well there there's a couple tips I have and they come from what Jerry has said too um he takes the melody of the song like a vocal melody and learns it on guitar and then solos based around that also instead of just soloing by scale you can think chord tones so in the beginning the chords that I'm looping remember are just really this is a complicated way to play them with the descending bass line but they're really just G C. So look at our chord tones by making chords like how I talked about. So G is G B D. That's a G chord, G triad, and uh, C is C E G. So if you land on those notes, they'll be really strong. And Jerry does it all the time. It's kind of like guide tone lines where you land on. Uh, for example. If I take the 5th fret of the high E string and I bend it up, I'm bending the 2nd of the scale or the ninth, not to confuse you guys, but into the major 3rd. Remember I said the 3rd defines the chord, so we can use notes that are strong over the chord. Then C. Watch, I'll do arpeggios and kind of like uh, both just with G and C chords. So this is G, G, C, C, G, C. And then after that, just use, so we talked about pentatonics, which is five note scales. E minor pentatonic or G major pentatonic over this, same scale, different starting note. So it's like taking your E minor pentatonic and just starting on the second note, G instead. But we can always use any note, so instead of just the diatonic scale, which would be like, um. Whoops. You can do things like use the blue note, which is uh, switching from minor to uh, major third. And I say a lot, that's what's done in things like Scarlet and Mississippi, like... Right? So we would go fifth on the D, and then hit three on the uh, G, which is technically out of key, but we go right hammer it on into the major third B. So watch. Jerry does those a lot, two sequences. So like, uh, where you go, where you, you, you would go down maybe four notes. Go back up, so you'll get the you'll get it. it's like math almost. Jerry does those all the time, and those are just a couple ideas. And this last thing I put on there is just like a fretboard. You should write the frets in down here because it doesn't say them, but I like this one because it says sharp and flat and 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 how they're in harmonic. So like how in like for example, a uh, G sharp is also an A flat. They're the same note. And harmonic means same note, different name. It just depends on the context. So, um, let's see. I'm still really bummed that I can't see any comments.
Okay. Um. So maybe I mean talk talk about soloing over the other parts. So yeah, let me loop uh, really quickly before we're done. How you would solo over the other part. So the other part, remember, set out running, but I take my time. It's just D A minor, D A minor, C D. So like, let me get this loop going. Two, three, four. Chromaticize everything, which means play, uh, just, chromatic just means playing, like, every single note in a row, basically, to describe it like that, so, like... But if you use it quickly and don't end on it, sounds good. So yeah, this is just, you can think E minor pentatonic, but why I suggest thinking G major is because if you think E minor, you're going to end on this. And it does, it's not, doesn't resolve as nicely as... about another song that kind of uses a similar well that's one to four g is our one chord c is our four chord the three major chords so one uh uh one four and five and any major key are major chords two three and six are minor chords and the uh seventh is a half diminished which is like I go to Wayne State uh, in Detroit for jazz studies, so that's how I know all this crazy theory. You don't really hear the half diminish the, the seventh chord in a major key too often. That's your uh, low green mode, which is kind of weird to jam in. But another song that's similar, let me think of it real quick. So Sugary, A, B, C. So yeah, it's a 1-4. Sugary is... If you count, B, C, D, E. And when you count like that, you don't have to worry about sharps or flats in the scale, really. Because every diatonic scale should have one of each note. It should never be like there's both an F, sharp, F and F sharp and one. There's one of each note. And that's how you get things that don't make sense, like uh, B sharp or E sharp, which are technically E sharp is just an F and B sharp is just a C. If you look at a piano, every octave has two white keys that don't have a black key in the middle of them. And those are natural half steps apart. Every other note is a whole step apart and there's a sharp flat between it. So sugary. Uh, if you want to learn how to play that real quick, it's just F sharp and G sharp. So two and four on the low E string. And then a B chord. So F sharp, G sharp, two, four on the uh, low E. And then B, uh, second fret of the A. And I'm assuming you know how to play a B bar chord. If not, just literally look it up. That's one of the most common Bs. 
and then we go back to F sharp, but then walk down to E. See, there's the chromaticism right there that Jerry and Bobby do. So instead of thinking, because think about it, if you always solo in pentatonic, you have five notes to work with, which is great. It's a great foundation to build off of, and it it's nothing, there's nothing, you know, music theory is to be learned so you can break the rules. I like to learn music theory, so not to, like, follow everything they say, but so I can step outside, you know, learn the rules so you can break them, basically. And then when I'm at home practicing, I'm very, like, thinking when I'm alone, how to, you know, what's, what's, you know, all this, all this kind of stuff. And then when I improvise, just like Jerry probably did, then you don't think at all. You're not, like, is this the, the third of this? No, you know that from your practice time that you've spent putting into it. So sugary, two, four, and then two on the A. And that walk down, chromatic walk down, F sharp, two on the low E, one on the low E, to the E. E chord, E major, E suspended four, which just takes the E chord, which if you don't know is uh, in numbers is zero, two, two, one, zero, zero from low to high, and you take where your uh, index finger is and put, suspended just means you're taking out the third any suspended chord is a lot of tension because this really wants to resolve back down. Like the May 77 versions that I love of that song, as well as a lot of them. Most of the solo section is just those two chords. So almost like Friend of the Devil, but different style completely. But you would still use the, uh, like the B major scale. Just like you use the G major scale on this. Let me see if I can loop it. The hard part about looping stuff like this is if you think about it, there's pickup notes, which mean that this... It starts, this is the downbeat, like when the beat starts. Two, three, four, one. See how there's notes before the one? So you want to start the loop on one. There's a, there's a lot of little stuff like that that helps out, but so. following chord tones there the chord tones of B major and E major root third root root bend to the third root of both chords and this one you can think of G sharp because remember we said the sixth degree is the relative minor so A, B, C, D, E, F, G sharp, 6. So you, you could use the G minor pentatonic scale. If you want to know how to change pentatonic to major, it's really easy. We talked about it. So we have G sharp pentatonic starts on 4, 4, 7, 4, 6, 4, 6, 4, 6, 4, 7, 4, 7. Four seven four six four six four six four seven four seven, and to make that major, we're gonna start on the seven instead. So. So, take that kind of box, or here actually instead of starting low like that, this is what I would do. Take your B, which is the root note here. 
which is not the root of the G sharp minor pentatonic. So B, four, six, four, five, seven, four, six, seven. Here, so I'll show you. Again, I have to re-loop that. I don't know why I unlooped it. So that was here, right here. Four, six, four, five, seven, four, six, seven. All we're adding in is the major third, which was that six, and the uh, suspended, or just the, the fourth of the scale, which is this. And I'm using the blue note there, which is, doesn't sound good if you hold it out, but if you play it at the right time. So we took our, usually the pentatonic, remember, on the G, so when we get there to G string, it's four, six, four, seven, four, seven. Now we're doing four, six, four, five, seven, four, five, six. One, first, degree of the scale, major second, major third, perfect fourth, perfect fifth, uh, major sixth, major seventh, and back to home base. So I would just recommend taking that box, or even up an octave. If you don't know how to go up an octave, just add 12 frets. Once you get to the 12th fret, it's almost like everything's opened again. So, let's go back to it. And just use those notes. You don't need a lot of notes to start off in one box. So that's how I really started to learn. I said, okay, I got this box really well memorized. How can I go up to, from there, like extend that? Instead of learning boxes all over the place, learn how you can just extend this box. So I can go, not stop at that seven, but go up to nine, and then if I bend the nine, it gives me the major third of B, which is uh, A, B, C, D, D sharp. I don't know, I might have said a couple things wrong, I'll review this, but I'm just kind of going with it. So yeah, take that box, which we took from the minor pentatonic, or major pentatonic, I should say, same thing. And then see how you can extend it. So instead of four, six, four, five, seven, four, six, seven, we can do, use this little box up here to slide up. Seven, nine, and seven, nine on the B and the E. And that's how it gives you a lot of soloing room. And then especially bending that 9, because we bend into a D sharp, which is the third of B major. And if you land on a chord tone, it sounds amazing. So watch. I'll start off. And I'm just using like two or three, four notes here. That's all you need at first, or ever even, really. Then remember I said... Slide up, seven and nine. Then go even higher. So that blue note is, uh, that Jerry uses a lot is four six remember we have four six four five seven to keep repeating you just hit the seven there too but you don't want to hang out there you want to use it six seven on the d g four on the b back down seven six and you can use repeating patterns like that Jerry loves
apologies. Going down four notes really quickly. I'm gonna have to figure out if there were either no comments so far or I just couldn't see them. But I hope that helps you guys. Let me know what you want me to do next. Uh, donate if you feel the need. I would still be doing free lessons, but I just crashed my car yesterday. And I go to school full time and work. I would love to just get my YouTube channel big enough. I'm almost at 100 subscribers now. Join Dedicated Jams. And uh, thank you guys for all the support and everything. Take care.